I think it's over. It's, the outcome is over six out of ten. How about that? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say more than that. The host country of COP26 struggled to declare it a success after two weeks of grueling negotiations. For some, even that assessment is too rosy. It's a death sentence for the poorest people on the planet. Among the compromises, a last-minute change requested by China and India, from an initial agreement to phase out coal power to to phase down unabated coal power. For some countries already facing an existential threat from climate change, that one word means abandoning a commitment to keep the world to 1.5 degrees of warming. What we like to express, of course, is not just our astonishment, but our immense disappointment. Some were Sorry. quick to downplay the change. Whether the language is phase down or phase out doesn't seem to me, uh, as, a, as a speaker of, of English, to make that much difference. You phase down on the path to phasing out. China gets more than half its energy from coal. India more than 70 percent. And its economy is growing rapidly. We can't afford for, you know, India, um, other developing countries to make the same mistakes that we made to develop massive fossil fuel infrastructure. But Canada wasn't eager to point fingers. And they're saying, listen, we have lots of poor people, energy demand is going up in India, and we need to be able to provide energy to our people. And and that's certainly something I can I can relate to. Some environmentalists say Canada may have another reason not to cast stones. So blaming India doesn't solve the fact that we are the G20 country that has provided much more funding to oil and gas globally, more than $12 billion a year. Canada did commit to phasing out much of its international fossil fuel subsidies by the end of 2022. But backing the words of COP26 with more action will no doubt be a focus at COP27 in Egypt next year. Rafi Bujikan, CBC News, Ottawa.